No, 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 no. I, I got I got another Dunning in the mail. It's the fourth one now. It, it might be because I'm a little bit behind on rent. Listen, it's not important. What's important is they're going to take away my house. Unless I take my house away from them. All right, all right. I've got this. I'm going to make my house fly. I'm going to attach a gazillion balloons to the top of my house and fly away from all my problems. Just like in that movie, um, uh, Up. In Up, the main character, an old man called Carl, wishes he could go to the Amazon rainforest to meet his idol. When the state comes to take his house away because they're going to build a skyscraper there, he attaches a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, many balloons at least, to the top of his house and flies away to the unknown land of poisonous snakes and an undefined number of insects. Yuck. I don't want to go to the Amazon rainforest, but I do want to make my house fly. And according to Up, it's just to attach a thousand or so balloons to the top of the house and just sort of fly away. This works because of something called buoyancy or buoyant force. If you put something into a fluid, that can mean either a liquid or a gas, the fluid is going to push back up on the object with a certain force, all depending on the density of the fluid and loads of other factors. Now, this is why you appear to weigh less in water than you do on dry land, because the water is pushing back up on you. Now, if the buoyant force is stronger than the force of gravity, that object is going to float. So, if we attach enough balloons to the top of my house, that is going to increase the buoyant force of my house and hopefully, in the end, make it fly. According to my father, my house is about 56 square meters. And according to Daryl Hay, the rule of thumb for the weight of houses with three stories is about 350 pounds per square feet. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly how I came to the weight of my house because it was basically just a truckload of conversion and multiplication and you don't want to see that. But my house should weigh in at about 95,000 kilograms or 95 tons. If that is incorrect, that is going to affect every single aspect of the rest of this video, and I'm going to cry myself to sleep. Helium, which is what we are putting into the balloons that are going to lift my house, can lift about one gram of weight per one liter of helium. This means that my house, which weighs 95 million grams, we'll need 95 million litres of helium to take off, or let's round that up to 100 million litres, or about 100,000 cubic metres, simply because, you know, I have furniture and stuff. My house probably weighs a little bit more than that. So, 100,000 cubic metres. Wow. Now, I'll be the first to admit, 100,000 cubic meters is a bit difficult to visualize, so let me put it this way. A completely normal balloon usually has a diameter of about 30 centimeters. That means it can fit about 14.1 liters of helium in it, and we would need 7.9 million of those balloons. And if you put all of those balloons together into a perfect sphere, that sphere is going to have a diameter of 56 meters, meaning it's going to be 56 meters tall and 56 meters wide. That is as tall as a leaning tower of Pisa. Boop. You know, the funny thing is, this doesn't correspond with what we see in Up at all. If we say that Carl's house is about 5 meters in length, and his balloon seems to be about four to five times the length of his house, that means that his balloon sphere has a diameter of about 20 to 25 meters. His balloon sphere looks like this, but should really look like this. Twice as tall and twice as wide. Hmm. The cheapest balloons I could find on Amazon cost about 14 for a pack of 100, and we need 7.9 million balloons, meaning 79,000 Packets multiplied by 
1.1 Buying this many balloons would cost 1.1 million euros or about 1.2 million dollars. If, if I had that amount of money, I would just pay my rent. And, and that's not including the price of helium simply because I, I couldn't find a consistent price. And, well, video time. Mm, guys, I'm starting to think that this whole helium balloon idea was kind of bad, bad in the first place. I mean, there are so many downsides to it. Like, how would we even control the thing? Okay, so let me explain. The funny thing about helium balloons is that they make your voice sound funny. The other funny thing is that they can only float so far before they stop. Helium balloons float because they are lighter than the atmosphere around it, but at a certain point in the atmosphere, the atmosphere gets so thin that it equals the atmospheric pressure inside the balloon, and the balloon stops going upwards. Our atmosphere is divided into several different sections, but the only ones important to us are the three lowest ones. The troposphere, the stratosphere, and the mesosphere. The troposphere is where we live. It's warm, it's chill, it's a little bit of both. The troposphere reaches about 10 kilometers away from the Earth's surface. This also happens to be about where airplanes tend to fly. Above the troposphere, we have the stratosphere, which reaches 30 kilometers away from the Earth's surface. And above that again, we have the mesosphere, which reaches 50 kilometers away from the Earth's surface. And it is just between these two layers that our inflated friend will end up, about 32 kilometers away from the Earth's surface. Or at least, so says coolcosmos.ipac.edu. You know it's legit, because they have cool in their name. But also because it's funded by Caltech. We don't want to go to the mesosphere. It's negative 90 degrees Celsius up there, it's low access to oxygen, we'd be suffocated by ozone as we pass by the stratosphere, and we'd be given cancer by a strong UV radiation that's constantly hitting us from everywhere. And there's no Wi-Fi. So how do we stop ourselves from reaching this unholy hell with no internet connection? Well, we could start cutting off balloons as we start to reach the height we want to be at, but we're gonna have to cut off a lot of balloons, and I mean a lot, a lot of balloons. One or two isn't going to cut it. <laughs> One or two isn't going to be enough because our house will still have the momentum from all the balloons. Or all of those balloons will still have pulled our house into a sudden speed. And we're going to have to cut off like thousands upon thousands of balloons if we want to make our house completely stop. And then there's acceleration upwards. If we cut off too many balloons we might end up falling. What do we do then? Well, I, I guess we could carry with us sandbags that we throw out when we want to gain height or something, but like, we're gonna have a limited storage of those and like, 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 I wish we could just fill the helium balloon with new helium, like a hot air balloon. Hot air balloon. That's our answer. Hot air balloons are way safe and quite frankly much easier to use than helium balloons. As, as, assuming you know how to operate them. In 1897, a man called Solomon Andre had the brilliant idea of trying to fly over the North Pole with a hydrogen balloon. Due to the way he intended to control the balloon, he flew up and down and up and down and up and down for two days straight until it finally crashed. It was admittedly a hydrogen balloon, not a hot air balloon, which only furthers my argument that helium balloons are not away, but still, we're gonna have to be careful. I think most of us have been told how a hot air balloon works at one point or another in our lives, but in case you've forgotten, here's a quick sum up. So a hot air balloon is filled with hot air that comes in from a gas burner below the balloon, or the, the envelope, as it is supposedly called. Personally, I don't see it. The hot air is then what makes the balloon rise, because hot air rises and cold air that's outside the balloon falls. This is how the balloon flies. Pretty simple, really. But what you might not have been told in your childhood is the fascinating mathematics of buoyancy and rising air. Net buoyant force. It sounds scary. It looks 
scary. It looks complicated, but it is really, really quite simple. Basically, net buoyant force means how powerfully an object that is lighter than air is being pulled upwards. We are measuring how much a balloon, for example, weighs upside down. When, when you stand on the ground, you are being pulled towards the ground, being pulled towards the ground with, with a force that can be measured in kilograms. We are going to do the same thing upside down. The formula for calculating net point force is net point force given in kilograms will equal the density of the air around us given in kilograms per cubic meter subtracted by the density of the balloon given in kilograms per cubic meter and all of that multiplied by the volume of the balloon given in cubic meters. Now we are not going to be using this exact formula because we already know the net buoyant force of our balloon. It's supposed to lift my house which weighs a hundred thousand kilograms. We want to figure out the volume of the balloon. Therefore we need to rearrange the formula to make it look like this. Volume equals the net buoyant force divided by the density of the air minus the density of the balloon. So, now that we have our formula, all we need to do is to plug in the variables. My house weighs about 100,000 kilograms. We went through this before. 100,000. The density of the atmosphere is about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. So we write that down, 1.2. The density of my balloon is difficult to put a finger on. We're gonna have to do more maths. Finding the density of hot air is a bit difficult. It requires something called the ideal gas law. Now, the, the ideal gas law is a formula that is used to explain how a gas behaves during certain circumstances, such as pressure, density, and temperature. Now, I'm not going to be going too thoroughly into how exactly to use this thing because I have already gone through one formula today, I don't need another one, that would take way too long time. But I'm just going to use it, show it to you how I used it, and point out that temperature is a big deal in the ideal gas law. So now I have sort of fleshed out the formula a little bit. I have reformulated it, defined it by density, and I have plugged in some variables. The only thing left is temperature. Now, a hot air balloon can get between 100 to 120 degrees Celsius. I'm going to be kind and say 120. In Kelvin, that should be about 393 Kelvin, which would give us a final answer of 0 0.89 kilograms per cubic meter. Plugging this number into our final equation gives us that the ultimate and final result, the volume of our hot air balloon, is going to be 322,000 cubic meters. That is much bigger than our helium balloons. Our new balloon is still going to have a diameter of about 85 meters. 30 meters longer and 30 meters taller than our helium balloons. This still isn't even close to that of an ordinary hot air balloon, which usually has a diameter of a weasley 16 meters. I seriously doubt we are going to find anyone sending a hot air balloon with a diameter of 85 meters. Okay, so, um, hot air balloon is obviously not happening. Um, so, uh, plan C, plan C, we use, uh, we use hydrogen, hydrogen instead of helium. Hydrogen is lighter than helium and therefore have a, have a stronger buoyancy force. Except it's only 8% stronger than helium, damn it. Alright, um, plan, plan D, D for drones. We attach drone wings to the top of my house. We, um, we attach drone wings to the top of my house, that's just... You know, I spend an awful lot of time on this channel thinking about how to do something. How to make my house fly so I can run away from my problems. And I mean, it's definitely doable with the right people and the right budget. Elon Musk, call me up. But 
maybe it's time to think more about if we should do something, rather than how. Well, I know about you, but I'm going to go and get a job. Seems a lot easier than making my house fly anyways. Also, I kind of forgot to tell you that um, th there might be a tiny thing that keeps me from moving my house in that I live in a terraced house. Yeah, that that might that might be uh, that that might be it. Maybe. Okay, bye. And the element of the month is thorium. Thorium is perhaps the most interesting element so far on the hashtag element of the month. Thorium is the 90th element on the periodic table and highly radioactive. This means that it can be used in nuclear power plants as a replacement for uranium. However, the power plant must be especially made to use thorium instead of uranium. And because of this, the nuclear power plant market today for thorium isn't very big. Don't forget to vote for your favourite element in the monthly element contest down in the comment section. Who knows, maybe your favourite element will be the next element of the month. You know, the, the more and more I think about it, the less and less sense it makes that Carl actually took his house to the Amazon jungle. Maybe the whole plot of Up actually takes place in Carl's head as he is driven insane by the death of his wife. Yeah, that makes sense. What? I'm a theorist. Let me do my thing.